Welcome everyone. This session is about all you need to know about getting paid for your music. Uh, my name is Garbit. A little bit about myself. I am an engineer. I graduated in electronics engineering, after which I was working with a cloud consulting firm where I was a process improvement analyst. Musically, I am a vocalist and a keyboardist, so I started my own band and I was doing live shows after which I was also studying music with Global Music Institute, which is the only uh, Berkeley affiliated music school in India. After that, I decided to combine my business knowledge and my passion for music to study masters in music business at Berkeley College of Music. A post which I worked with a company, which is an investment firm, primarily uh, dealing with royalties and music. And finally, as you can see the logo on the screen, I have my own firm called Groovy Consulting, where we help musicians to get educated in the music business and get help from all the people involved. Now let's get right into it. So the music business is a difficult to understand. A lot of people, uh, even managers, lawyers, and uh, music business professionals are a bit hazy on the details. The idea for this session is to uh, is to educate you basically about how the business is working. As soon as you create music, as soon as you create a song, you basically have a copyright associated with it. And once you have a copyright, you are going to earn royalties on that. So first of all, you are a business and how you choose to run it is on you. Either you can do it yourself, which is you get to keep all of your copyright but you spend a little more time away from the creative side. You have to learn the business industry and build connections. On the other hand, you'd also get some help, wherein you have to share some copyright ownership. Uh, you would have more time to focus on your art and you can take advantage of these helpers of the capabilities, niche and connections, which help you get paid faster. And what kind of help am I talking about? It's essentially publishers and record labels. So your music business, like any other business, will have a flow of revenues with some costs associated with it for either running them or uh, upfront costs. And at the end, you'll have some profits out of it. Okay, so let's dive deeper into the money side. So how can you collect money? In a sense, uh, your business one would have monies from a public performance wherein Your song is being like your song is formed uh, live, and hence it's in a public place, and hence it's, it's subject to performance royalties. The other kind of royalties that you can earn are the mechanical royalties, which is basically to uh, which is basically the revenues that you get for a for a copy that is made of your song, like the basic lyrics of the melody. Somebody is copying that. If somebody is creating a cover. If somebody is releasing that song onto streaming services, they are copying your main uh, copyright. And that is the mechanical royalties. And the final royalties that you can get are synchronization royalties, which is basically uh, using your song in audio, visual, and moving images. On business two side, again, you have three kinds of royalties. One is the digital performance, which is also called neighboring rights. And these are, again, the money that you receive because uh, your song is being played in a, uh, on a public space. The master recording is basically the, the royalties that are paid to you because of the use of your master track. And synchronization, as in the other business, is essentially your song being used in an audiovisual format. The kind of revenue sources that you have in business one are some things such as streaming, including non-interactive and interactive, physical recordings, ringtones, covers, grand rights, which is basically using in um, some stage performances, film, TV, adverts, synchronization rights, merchandise, karaoke, and a lot of other stuff. So as you can see, there's a lot of revenue sources in business one. For business two, again, you have a lot of revenue sources given the fact that your particular recorded track is used. 
Okay, so if somebody's using your if somebody's using your song and they have a cover version, in a sense, the business too belongs to them. They are just using your business one. So if your track is being used, you will earn revenue from business two. That is the master side. Having said that, you need to be aware and beware of work for hire. So work for hire is an arrangement where in an organization or an individual would ask you to create something for them and then pay you up front. And in a sense, you would not own any copyright and you would have no business at all, either business one or business two, whatever. So how do we collect revenues for business one, which is the composition? The first step that you need to do is to register with the collection society. Three types of societies exist. Uh, one is the PRO, which is the performance society, and they collect the performance uh, royalties, such as ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and GMR. The MRO collects the mechanical royalties. These are the mechanical royalty organizations. The CMO are the collective management organizations which collect both your performance and your mechanical royalties, such as the IPRS in India. Your estimated revenues from streaming are essentially 6% of the total pie. So if, you're if, if a track on, let's say, Spotify earns $1, you would get six cents for public performance and six cents for mechanicals. In total, 12 cents for your business one. For business two, how do you collect revenues? You register with a distributor and or aggregator. These are services and organizations who help you distribute your music to the right uh, streaming service. You also have to get registered with the collection society, such as PPL and Sound Exchange, especially if you're not the featured artist, if you're the non-featured artist or the session musicians. Additionally, the expected revenues from streaming, in a sense, would be 58 cents on the dollar. Great. Let's get into the other side. What if you decide to get help in business one, which is like publisher, the publisher will take half of your public performance royalties, which is at three cents on the dollar. And why? Because it's sharing the risk of your song working or not working. And they're also providing the ease of licensing and money collections. They have connections with all the collection societies. They also help you get money from extraterritorial coverages, for example, outside your geographical location. They also provide you an upfront advance money, which they might get back from you. So that's what recuperable means there. They also provide opportunities for collaborations. They provide opportunity for sync, which is synchronization. They help in marketing, administration, and other benefits. So how much they're gonna take this half of public performance is just an estimate. And what they're gonna take will depend on the kind of contract you have with them. A co-publishing deal is, in a sense, uh, where you would spend a lot of money, uh, where, where you would have to give up more of your copyrights compared to an admin deal, wherein you would just uh, be giving them one-time fee or maybe a percentage fee for just the administration out of all of, the, all of these services. On the second business, uh, the record label will take half of the business two side, which is approximately 29% for again, sharing the risk and providing you some distribution services. So you might not have to go to a distribution service directly. They will help you do it. They will also track your payments. They will ensure you get the money on time. They will also be responsible for marketing you and creating opportunities. And the record label might also provide an advance money. Having said that, uh, Again, oh, so on the record side, again, you have two types of contracts. One is a 360 deal, wherein they get money from all of uh, the all, all of the all of the creative output that you do, whether it's a live show, whether it's something that you've recorded, and the distribution fee, in a sense, is a, is just a distribution fee. So they help you uh, distribute your music through whatever wherever you want to do it. Great, so let's just see how the revenue flows. And we are just talking about on-demand streaming, which is in sense uh, streaming platforms, which are also known as DSP, a digital service provider, is a provider which provides the service digitally in terms of music. They are like Spotify, Deezer, GeoSau, and YouTube, et cetera. 
all the revenue, as you need to understand, in on-demand streaming comes from the DSP. Each label, distributor, publisher, and the collection society have their own deal, own individual deals. Every publisher has their own deal with the DSP. Each label has their own deal. And the terms are often secret and not revealed. The values or the percentages that I'm going to take in this lecture are an approximation to the closest representation of any particular deal. The actual flow varies from contract to contract, of course. In a sense, what happens is that DSP figures out what is the total revenue that they've earned. If a label's catalog accounted for, for example, 20% of total consumption, then 20% of revenue is allocated to that catalog, out of which, depending on the contract, the DSP takes some part and then sends on to the record label, the other part. So let's talk about that diagram. OK, so first of all, the players. On one side, we have the songwriter and the publisher, along with collection societies. That's a business one in purple on the top. And on the orange, you have your business two, which is the artist and the record label along with distributor and the collection societies on the record side. Finally, the DSP, which helps uh, the music get goes on, uh, go on to the customer. Let's talk about the flow of creative idea. So in a sense, the songwriter, along maybe with a the publisher, they give the composition of the song to an artist or record label to record, which then produces a master, which then goes on to the distributor who then distributes that master to the DSP. And the DSP provides the final track on the consumer, something which, which the consumer sees on the Spotify, uh, for example. Let's see the flow of money. So the consumer pays the DSP on a subscription basis. As you all know, the DSP keeps approximately 30%, from where 6% goes to the PRO, which is the performance uh, revenue for you. And 6% goes to the mechanical revenues. In a sense, total you get 12%, which might be distributed with the publisher as follows. On the other side, DSP pay the 58% remaining through the collection societies to the record label and the artist. And the distribution is something like this. The collection societies on both sides take a percentage cut on the revenue flowing through them from the DSP to the final creative producer. Finally, there is some attached metadata, which is like an identification of the song. A composition will have its ISWC, and a master will have its ISRC. A song which has been released on the SP will have both ISRC and ISWC, but the problem in the music industry is that this ISRC and ISWC have a difficult relationship, and they are not connected with each other. And hence, it's difficult to find out who is the actual songwriter on a particular song. Also, there is an identification for the songwriter and the publisher, which is an IPI, which is a unique number for both of these entities. The complete picture looks something like this, wherein a songwriter might also have some co-writers uh, who might also have their own publishers with different IPIs. And they get their money via splits. And the split happens here in the mechanical societies. Uh, on the other side, the artist might have some non-featured artists and session musicians, and they are paid via CMOs or the collection societies, as mentioned here. As you might have noticed, the revenue flow, uh, the revenue split, in a sense, is distributed something like this, which is the DSP gets 30%, the song or the publishing side gets 12% and the recording gets 58%. Another interesting conversation going on in the music industry is that if the split is equitable or not, is this fair or not? Again, we're not going into the debate. We're just talking about how we can collect that money. So if you could note, if you're both the writer and the artist, the total part of the pie for you is 34%. If you don't get help from a publisher and you decide that you're going to have your own publishing company, then you get 3% more out of the pie. If you decide that you're not going to help get help from a record label, then the incremental percentage for you is 33%. It's huge. Uh, yeah, we are less on time, and I'm just going to wrap it up in the next five minutes. 
just talking about the C side and P side, in essentially, in a sense, C side is basically a business one, which is uh, the composition side, and P side is the record side. I'm just going to skip this because we've talked about how the DSPs work. Finally, there are the last thing that I want to talk about is what are the royalties that I get from revenue sources? There are multiple revenue sources, such as physical recordings. Do you remember the CDs and vinyls that we used to buy earlier? They had music copyrights associated with them called the reproduction and distribution. The reproduction side is basically a copy of your business one side. And hence, you get mechanical licenses and mechanical royalties associated with them. And on the business two side, it's basically the master recording, which is being copied on the physical recording. And hence, you get distribution money. Similarly, there are a lot of revenue sources and a lot of copyrights associated, in turn getting a lot of revenues and royalties from business one and business two together. The point that I want to put across is that if your song is out there, you are earning money. You just need to know how to collect it properly. In the appendices, I have uh, written down some frequently asked questions. People ask, which society should I get registered with? How do we collect revenues from, if I'm, I'm just creating cover songs, uh, how can I fund my music if you're getting low on money? Which distribution, distributor should you choose? Uh, when should I get a team together for myself, manage a lawyer, or any other stuff? So as I end this session, I just want to say that there are some important reading material that you could do. CMU Trends is basically a complete music update. You can go online and check it out. They have interesting material. Uh, Association of Independent Musicians, AIM, also has a startup guide to music business. It is definitely a read. You can also visit groovyconsulting.com. As I said, we are educating uh, musicians on how to collect revenues and also providing services and uh, help on how, uh, how to get registered with people who can help get uh, revenues for you. And at the end, uh, feel free to contact me directly at uh, this email address or on Instagram or find me on LinkedIn. Great. So enjoy the rest of Finocon.